that? It's more documentaries. There's documentaries about that. Yes. Yeah. Like the Chinatars of America. Chinatars of America. That's a pretty good one, actually. Daryl is in it as well. Yeah, I think I, I must have seen that in Tuning In and, and others. Uh, Tuning In, but... that's it. Chinatars of America is actually the subtitle. You're right. Yeah. So that one is beautifully done. Yes. Uh, and there's many interviews, but there isn't an actual movie, even though the idea of being connected with a higher something mm -hmm. is as but, old as humanity. I mean, it's in the story of Jesus, in a sense. Yes. Um, and yeah, I think the idea of like, um, you've seen Limitless, right? Oh, with the pills? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. How was it? I just saw the other day again, and I was like, I mean this is also what's happening, you know, expanding of consciousness. I mean, of, of course you can associate it with the higher self or something you can, but there's a way of playing that route. Of course we would use just pure meditation and not, you know, not, not taking a pill maybe, or some, maybe even an electronic device that would uh, assist the vibration um, to allow anybody to kind of uh, become this super human you know, yeah. but um, but you like the, the the information how in the you if you remember when he had like he saw the like numbers on the ceiling, you know the way they put the you know it was 2011 a little while ago and they did a really nice job of explaining synchronicity and true. You know, I was like, oh my, there is such a fun, so fun. Um, well, that might be close, maybe I don't know. It's still a bit of a, you know a movie kind of thing, not really like sitting down and channeling. Uh, there is a new version of Sherlock Holmes on Netflix, and he totally channels. Mm -hmm. And it's so great with the special effects, how they showed how within his mind he can solve a crime just from the tiniest details. He will just zoom in and get all these extra puzzle pieces. And you can he has the kind of same same kind of effect that you get from the pills in the other movie. Mm -hmm. Does he, but he smokes tobacco on a pipe. Does he smoke? Yeah. Because Sherlock Holmes is known as always having a pipe. And, and, and did he have that? He has in the show also. Is he smoking a pipe in his chair and uh, letting a grandpa smoke? tobacco take him on a trip? Oh, I don't think he smokes a pipe. I think they, no, no, no. They made it a whole new version. You have to see mm. this. It's awesome. Okay. It's awesome. This is uh, uh, Benedict uh, Cumberbatch, right? They moved it to our times. So it's in this, this age. It's a modern Sherlock Holmes. Okay, wow, a reboot to a okay, it's not with Cumberbatch with access to internet and everything. So, wow, <laughs> but he still smokes, he's just this weirdly weird person. But I mm. love how they the actor who does that character that's an art. Oh my god, he did a really mm. good job. Yeah. And then there is a movie, The Queen's Gambit, of a little girl orphan who learns how to play chess and she kind of teaches herself in her head and like you just mentioned seeing the numbers on the wall mm -hmm. she sees the chessboard on the ceiling and again with amazing special effects they show how she solves puzzles in her head but they make it visible mm -hmm. so I, the whole idea of channeling and in sense eight amazing yes. connections yeah. with other selves i mean there's a lot of series right now that um give visuals to the idea of channeling in the one way the oa That's as well you've, you've heard the way right which one the oa oh hey oh i couldn't see that one i tried okay. i saw a uh, one and a half or two episodes and then i started feeling really uncomfortable <laughs> like, I, I didn't watch it all either i mean um it's but i i i, I mean i still can appreciate with the the movement and and the and stuff and the, they incorporated Ah, oh, um, there was something about it. There was a frequency to it. Honestly, I don't have this very often, but I couldn't stand it. I was like, okay, there's there's just something in there I do not resonate with. So yes. I decided not to watch it. Too dark, I guess. Uh, but so that is not in the Queen's Gambit and that's not in the Sherlock Holmes thing. It's just mm. cool. I think that, yeah, the idea of like channeling is also, if we want to get nitty gritty, we're channeling, I'm channeling this in the situation you are as well. And the actual information is everything is perfect, communicating concepts. I mean, as the idea of Sherlock Holmes being able to do that in, in his mind, but literally, it's 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 out here too. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. um, and and it's the knowing in the same moment you see it. So 
So there's no real like calculation. That's the, the thing that people think with Sherlock Holmes, he's some sort of calculating things. No, he's like, Einstein was also kind of given these, at least the, the main download, and then they probably worked on it later. But I think that's just the human perspective, trying to, all the answers are given in the moment, you know? And I think that to communicate that in a film or a book is, um, you know, that's, it's a difficult thing to, you know, to express, you know, like you, you feel, it feels like there, there has to be some sort of, you know, doing and calculating everything to make it um, believable to people. But, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think that's... Uh, and they're, well, that's good. They're just fitting in stepping stones so people can follow along from where they're coming from to this mm -hmm. new idea of sudden knowing, because it's too quick. It's too quick. The movie is a time space experience. Mm. And you gotta lay it out for the viewer who is coming from a time space experience. And we've been conditioned entirely to um, think that way, to be organized that way in our minds, even though everybody has sudden insights once in a while, and then you just immediately know. But how are you gonna um, explain that to a viewer who isn't in your head, you know? <laughs> so you have to stretch it out and put it into little in between steps somehow yeah no it's it's also about yeah, of course story um yeah the, but 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 we're, we're that's the biggest thing i think with like is the accepting the knowing at the same time as like when you receive information that's downloaded to you you know it's, it's i'm guessing it's you're unpacking it it's it's not it unpacks itself i'm, I'm you know it, it's not um you know, I, I think that, am I, am I, is this the way you come across it as well? Or how would you explain that? In my personal experience? Yes. Mm, well, in order to translate it in verbal language, you have to unpack it. You have to break it down. And you can have a download that takes a split second in mm -hmm. your experience and think, wow. And you just got it. You got the whole whatever you were pondering. You got the answer but then to translate it for another person it's an entire dance almost so there's so many things happening simultaneously so while i'm looking within my dictionary <laughs> of either dutch which is my mother's tongue so to speak uh, or mm -hmm. english which is a secondary language so i have to like do double translational work <laughs> yes so in either of these dictionaries, I have to look up the most efficient, vibrationally perfect match to whatever that segment of the download is about as I'm unwrapping it slowly into vocal language. And it's kind of like, you know, that, you know, when you see somebody go through a book like this, you know, like with all the pages go mm -hmm. real quick. It feels sometimes like that, but I'm really, really rapidly searching for the right word and they may stop me right in the middle of a sentence, even though it's not that Arjun is stopping me. It's more that now they know, so they gave you the entire answer. Now they understand you're gonna need some time to unwrap it and put it into translation. While I'm doing that, I'm maintaining an energetic connection with him every step of the way and they're kind of nudging me, this is the closest word you can find. Go ahead, go, go ahead with this part of the translation. And then halfway a sentence, I might be doubting. Um, how am I gonna continue from here on? And in the meantime, and this is why there's so many things happening at the same moment. If I'm doing the channeling for one other individual, say in a private session, they will even on top of everything else that's going on in my head, <laughs> Um, nudge me whether the angle from which I'm, I decided to come with the translation, mm -hmm. whether that is even being received or perceived, you know, effortlessly enough for the receiver on the other end. So they may go like, hmm, no, let's try another angle. And then it's just stop halfway sentence, try a new angle. Mm -hmm. And same concept, different way of unpacking. So it's, a constant dance. It's like balancing on a on a chord, you know. 
mm. where you're constantly sensing okay like this or like this or like this and when it's an effort effortless flow that's when you know i'm on it and i get a really great kick out of that <laughs> yes um i even love the moments when it's ch uh, challenging uh and i need to search quickly for a different approach it still needs to be pronounced by me and i'm a lucid channel i'm not out or something it's not like somebody else is doing the talking and it's not as if arjun speaks english or dutch so it still needs to be put into words that i decide which one it's going to be and if it's a concept that i'm very familiar with already then it's you know like that if it's something that I have never heard before either, it's a little bit more wobbly sometimes the first time. You may have a little bit more searching moments. Um, but I really love, I'm learning from this too, constantly. And it's it, it always, it feels new. Like every time we are, I guess if you were an actual dancer, you could never say you nailed it. You never have. You always have to continue training. You always have to continue keeping your body awake, I guess, or flexible. Do your warm up, do your cool down. And it feels like this kind of contact is the same thing, but for your mind. It feels like a dance. It really does. Hmm. That's the best know. explanation I think I've heard. Uh, one of the best explanations. Oh, <laughs> I appreciate it. No, it's really amazing. I really. Uh, highlights a lot i think um because a lot of people are really curious how how the, the transmission occurs and uh and, but i'm sure it's different for every channeler as well mm -hmm. and as i understand it in the olden days <laughs> in the past um the channels were far more out with or out of it with their consciousness because i don't yeah, sometimes even other people had to be present. I, I uh, heard about channeling situations where three people had to be in the room with the channeler just to, in a sense, hold the space. And then there had to be crystals and candles and symbols and all kinds of stuff laid around or even on top of that person who would be laying down because they would truly go kind of unconscious. And then very slowly, you know, word after word, the information would come through and then somebody else would write it down or something. Mm. So I've heard things would or could unfold like that, say in the 30s, 1930s, 40s. So really <laughs> some time back. And then 60s, 70s, um, you know about the Seth material by Jane Of course, Rose. yeah. Jane okay, yeah. I mean, some of the best stuff, some of mm. the best stuff out there according mm. to me i mean in my opinion um she was out of it as well and she would only hear what was said by seth afterwards when she got to listen to the recording mm. so but that doesn't really happen that much anymore as i understand it right now uh younger generations and that's the point too is what arjun tells me at least um the point is that we become more and more conscious channelers and there will be new generations where with the blink of an eye, you just switch to another segment of your greater self. You channel that information, you know, casually in the midst mm. of a normal conversation on the street and you carry on to the perspective that you may have already had before from your persona self's point of view. But it will weave into each other so effortlessly at some point. Mm. We probably won't even call it channeling anymore. It will just be part of how we communicate. But maybe by then we're already um, telepathic or so. I don't know. <laughs> no, I think um, I know uh, Astrid Halverson. She's a channeler. You know her? She's in Norway. Um, and uh, she switches autom e easily and automatically. There is also no uh, feeling difference. She doesn't feel, you feel a bit more energetic mm -hmm. when you're, but it's literally um, eyes open before it's closed. But it's just in, but it's obvious that it's not Astrid who's saying it, but it's like an on off. Um, mm -hmm. I'm very impressed. I think that that's the direction we're going into. It's, um, in, in, but when you feel that, do you feel, I mean, a lot of channels talk about feeling very connected and very energetic. So you're, you're, you're being fed 
through the alignment as well, some sort of energetic um, uppers, I guess, in some sense. So understand the information because it's vibrating so quickly. If yeah. you were in a low state, you won't be able to um, understand it. Yeah. I think that's really true. I think that's really true. Um, I once channeled uh, Arjun in the midst of still recovering from a flu. <laughs> And that was dizzying, you know, like really. And I suddenly realized that I had to come from a, a different place to meet him, that I came from a different place. You know, um, the energy frequency of my body still recovering from something was lower. And I thought, you know, intuitively I thought I could do it. And it went really well. It was a great challenge. It was just the moment when I tuned in with him it felt like I stepped into an elevator and it went at, I don't know how many miles an hour up into the sky. And I was seriously feeling dizzy. I was like, whoa, mm -hmm. uh, it was like this vacuum sensation. And I just realized, whoa, usually this is so much more effortless uh, because I'm already closer to where they are. Mm. But, um, but from in this recovering state, you know, yeah, it came from a little lower. So I felt a big difference. But usually, um, so when I just feel, you know, healthy and fit <laughs> and I channel, um, there is some of that vacuum sensation, but it is always joyful, I must say. It is love. I just feel love. Mm. And I feel instead of, well, I'm not quite sure. It's so challenging sometimes to find the words for this. Um, on one hand, you could say, you feel different from your natural self. That's what you could say on one hand. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, you could say, I feel more like my real self because the energy frequency of our June helps me. No, I'm still putting it wrong. So I'm constantly looking for the right ways to say this. Standing or allowing the energy frequency of the Yael to flow through me effortlessly um, helps me to allow a stronger sense of self-empowerment to be received by me as a person as well. So I'm allowing it in as if the channeling is a permission slip as well for me. I mean, other people are using it as a permission slip when I channel for them, obviously, but it's also a permission slip for me to allow in more of me because obviously, and Arjun has explained this, he or any higher frequency, um, entity that connects with you they have to go through the doorway of your higher self it's the only entrance there's no other entrance so you have to get an alignment with your higher self in order to channel to begin with so that's the first energy frequency you're going to encounter and then and if it's relevant for you you may be able to pinpoint a specific frequency that is connected to an entity if that's relevant and so Arjun, I got to know him through getting to know myself and to understand the difference between, oh, this is my higher self, that's Arjun. There is a, a definite character difference there. Mm -hmm. But in order for me to speak with Arjun and to allow that information to come through effortlessly, I need to be in alignment with my own higher self. So although you could say, I feel more like, quote unquote, someone else while I channel, I actually feel more like me because I'm so in alignment with my higher self and doing something I love to do. So that's what, you know, following your uh, highest enthusiasm basically does. So uh, yeah, uh, it's simultaneously happening. Okay, would you say that uh, it sounds to me like you, Vidika, your higher self is closer, like you feel when you're Arjun or that presence feels more like you you would say even some respects, would you even well, go that far? I think for everyone, if I'm getting you correctly, I think mm -hmm. for everyone, our higher selves feel like a self-empowered state or a self-empowered version of ourselves, like a power version of ourselves. And you're becoming, you're always constantly becoming the higher self as you allow yourself to evolve in a positive direction. So you're embodying more and more of the higher self as you allow that to channel through you which you do whenever you follow your highest enthusiasm whatever it looks like so whether that's channeling of an entity or doing an art or being a dancer or cook 
a gardener i don't know whatever <laughs> during the podcast i mean I just, like this is where i i reach up higher too i feel like uh, that's where it's good training especially with people like yourself i mean I'm, I'm, there's there's something else going on here where uh in and it's a step of um in and just being patient with it too because uh i think like if you were i mean obviously the the first connection you make is a, with your higher self and um and then that's like the portal to these other beings And your curiosity is what led you to our june would you say because you were not for example when you went to your higher self just staying there is wasn't enough for you perhaps to communicate the wisdom of your higher self purely uh no that was never you know i love communicating with my higher of course self. Yeah. and that always has been enough you know channeling wasn't on my agenda uh, it wasn't on my i'm aiming to become a channeler or this is a to-do list thing or i want it so badly it kind of just uh it, it got caught me by surprise. I was honestly like, I was in a group meditation the first time. I loved meditating. I did yoga. I was like for 10 years already, I was doing meditation. For me, it was really beneficial in my life. I got a lot of beautiful things from that. I was just loving my own communication with higher self and loving following my heart and my intuition in life. Anyway, basically. I never felt that that was not enough. It always gave me new challenges, new adventures, new passions, new desires to, to reach for, um, to fulfill in a sense. So my, my higher self has always been guiding me. I feel very, very guided by my higher self um, in many, many ways. So, and then they just kind of dropped in or made themselves more known. I knew there was ET energy and even hybrid energy. I knew that they were, involved in some of the communication i just never thought i could share that with other people i just I never pictured myself even on a stage at all i'm a I'm much more seclusive one-on-one -on -one type of person um so uh, my biggest challenge with these kind of things is overwhelm as a result of attention people wanting to ask questions or writing emails or um <laughs> dropping private messages on you in, in social media mm -hmm. um yeah <laughs> so this I, I never reached for that i was never like oh that sounds like fun because you kind of know it's gonna create a ripple in you know people's responses when you start stepping into the lights with this mm -hmm. um so when um the yael um announced their presence i was really taken aback it took me a month to to even I was like why <laughs> because I knew they were there it's just the moment they gave me their business card when it really came through as yeah yell I really I had I really needed time to wrap my mind around that and then um another channeler whom I didn't tell about this uh experience that I had in a group meditation um where I was just to just be with my higher self. <laughs> and then Arjun and the IRL came through very strongly. And I was, whoa, I, I was super puzzled. And then another channeler that I went through to see a month later, I didn't tell her about that. And uh, she confirmed it and she spelled it out yet again. And she, she was again, yeah, yell. I'm like, wow, this is insane. This is, she could have never known. And I felt that presence so strongly. And then they invited me. They said, if you wish to work with us for others, we are ready. Uh, we invite you to, you know, yeah, in a sense, join us in that dance. <laughs> so it really did feel like that. And then it took me another three days to incorporate that message. And then I just felt so much love. Mm. And it just, I, I felt it made sense in my heart but it didn't make sense in my head yet. Mm -hmm. So I started doing trial sessions with people um, for about three months. And after three months, um, so many people wanted to have private sessions uh, with uh, the IEL through me. By then I didn't have the name Arjun yet, that came later. Um, that, um, yeah, it's, it was like the universe said, if you just follow your joy in this path, I will support you. 
Mm. And I was like, okay, let's see where this goes. And I, I still call it an out of hand experiment sometimes. It's just it's still happening, you know? <laughs> But I'm yeah. also really choosing it. I'm choosing it every day. But I'm also telling myself every day, if I change my mind, I can stop immediately. Mm. Like I can do something else tomorrow. For me, it's really important to know I have a choice. Yeah. So mm. I, th I think, uh, I mean, I, I was getting a bit at the, the channelers that just purely channel source, for example, and the channelers that... Uh, other physical, non-physical entities. And I do, you know, the, the general message of source is of course beautiful and um, assist a lot. And, and I guess the little bit of color is added to it by uh, other civilizations out there that showing us that you can be as a physical being, have an experience of passion and joy and basically every moment, which seems from a human perspective uh, I know insane uh like is that how could that be possible but they just have so much trust in in the synchronicity of of reality and the universe that they'll always be given in the next moment and never to worry and to accept um, the reception of thoughts mm -hmm. and the, they accept a lot of things that humans have difficulty with even accepting this idea or embracing it and but to see that they they've done it and they've gone through, I guess, a process. I don't know the, the Yael, I think they're from, um, they just went, basically from the get go, they could do it. I mean, they were already, they are not like at a, a human level where we're evolving more and more into, they were already started, they're evolving of course, but they already started like fourth density, I guess, of where they already kind of understood the heart and uh, the connection and- Oh, um, yeah. the heart right. foundation is much more there. Yeah, yeah. still they are, on their own journey and uh, a younger species, so to speak. Um, so they can be puzzled. They can be surprised for a moment or need a split second. It will be a split second though, <laughs> to think about something. Uh, and the energy frequency, it still won't drop below neutral, but it can go to neutral. And that is something that I've observed as interesting and also nice to know in a sense. And I think it's part of the reason why I personally feel they have such a high ability to emphasize with us because mm -hmm. their emotional range or sliding scale in a sense is somewhat closer to us. The Yael are a little gentler or softer, and they, they break it down to tinier pieces. And I really resonate with that, I think. That's mm. one of the passions. And maybe that's why I quote unquote attracted that species to speak with. And I know I had uh, ET encounters from the gray human hybridization program uh, in my childhood. So everything came together when I realized, oh, this is the connection that I have, that I work with. So I can see how there's a huge fundament in me for that very specific theme that is also by some people wildly misunderstood. So there's almost a type of, I don't want to say, well, maybe, maybe it's a good word. I don't know. There's almost a type of racism in a portion of spiritual um, communities regarding the idea of the grace. And for me, even if you would listen to say, um, high quality teachings of Jesus or source, as you say, and, and I mean the really super love based stuff. If, if, if that is your fundament, it really doesn't matter where it comes from, you know, who's the teacher or what book or what movie you saw that gave you that very strong fund fundament, that doesn't matter. But coming from that, if you know, that then there is no answer in rejection or hate or anger or resistance against anything and i think somehow i probably as a character the character of my personality i like a little bit cutting edge i guess and I think the hybrids, the coloration, the, the splitting prism of, of flavors or colors that break down from source 
the hybrids very specifically represent us as a human race pulling up ourselves from our own boots <laughs> mm. uh, from darkness into light and they just underline the journey that we're already on and i think that's really beautiful i i love people i love humans so i love humanity so i feel there's a beautiful match with that love that was i think already within me mm. then when the connection with arjun came he kind of or his energy frequency and how I felt about myself being near to that gave me the guts to step forth with this information and share it with others so that I could express that love that was already in me. But I thought first, you know, yeah, it's just within me. <laughs> nice to have, <laughs> nice to walk around with, but I don't feel necessarily called to step into the spotlight. So that was my fear. Mm. So it feels like this passion is allowing me to overcome and transform a fear um and that's always constantly evolving i think for everybody who follows their passion there's always a challenge there's always a pitfall or something in their point of view mm. that we get to learn from <clears throat> no uh, uh, thank you very much uh, beautiful and I, I think we we should at this point we probably can mention that we're doing this webinar together and uh it's uh, going to be our june channeling uh, and the title has been already determined by Arjun, uh, Beyond the Fence. Mm -hmm. And it is uh, going to be on the 17th of April at 8 o'clock until 9.45. And it will be on uh, Zoom and people can purchase tickets online once they become available. And I'm very excited about that. Uh, and I think that, yeah, maybe the... do. You, do you have anything else to add behind beyond the what people can expect um, from this? Yeah, well, thank you for the announcement, first of all. And maybe we can put in the screen the time zone and that, that kind of details. Um, yeah, it's going to be the, a regular channeling setup in the sense that Arjun will first share some words on the theme, on the title, like of the transmission and explain a little bit what that's about. And then we will go into an open Q&A so people can ask any type of questions they may want to. Um, so that's that's going to be the regular setup. Um, and all I know so far is that Beyond the Fence is also a pun. <laughs> it is about, well, going beyond a fence or a limitation, whatever form that may have in your life, I guess. and. Um, be looking beyond or reaching beyond the idea of um, defense as, as in attack and defense. So um, yeah, I'm curious myself to see what this is going to be about because it's a very, I sense, um, relevant topic in these times <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> with so many people with so many opinions that seem or appear to be quite opposing in, at times. Mm, definitely. I'm excited about this. And <laughs> yeah. what, in, in this is the first time you've done an online event like this. And it's going to be, I'm sure it's going to be perfect. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it, will be, and it will be exactly what it needs to be. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And it's, it's, it was, you know, reach out to people who can come to live events in other parts of the world, perhaps, and who would love to participate, pose their questions. And, um, you know, try to get as many of them into the as possible uh, depending on how many people are there either i guess we can have them ask their questions verbally or just in the chat um so there's several options and uh yeah i'm, I'm very thankful that we can do this together Didica. yeah me too thank you justin for making it possible because i, I could have never done this alone <laughs> no I, and it's really exciting it is exciting yeah. and I appreciate it. And uh, I'm looking forward to, you know, the, if it's uh, the, the message and definitely, I think there's going to be something in there. The Yael have to tell us uh, or want to let us know. I, I'm, I'm positive. Um, maybe it's not that they're coming tomorrow or the day after, but you know, <laughs> it's like maybe they're just right around the corner beyond the fence. Who knows? Who yeah. knows? Yeah. yeah. I'm sure probably in general terms, disclosure is as far away as we define it to be. 
Mm. That's good. Definitely. Yeah. In general terms, because it just depends where you put your focus. And I see there's a lot of stuff moving right now. It's really exciting mm. in the news and well, maybe not the, the super mainstream news, but there's stuff coming out, out enough for me mm. to find it. And I'm just, you know, a regular <laughs> internet surfer. So if I can see that stuff pop up, then other people can too. So it's, mm. it's really fascinating to observe this unfolding and to see where it will take us all. It's, it's interesting because it's so much and you, you get like blurbs of stuff about Stonehenge and quantum physics breakthroughs and all at the same time, but it's like, you know, it's just like normal now and people are not, you know, it's not like, oh, I mean, this is really amazing stuff that's happening and it's, and it's accelerating and it's becoming more and more. And I think a lot of stuff is half, I think it's part of the, the process of you know, what we have to go through is expose ourselves to all the things we've been hiding from ourselves personally and as a collective. Um, and I think that that's definitely a process of uncovering and facing um, truths and accepting things that need to be accepted and then let go and that the new can come in. And I think that's uh, def it's definitely what we came here for, right? Yeah, yeah, well, I'm, I mean, I love that that's what's going on right now. <laughs> it feels like I came for this. Yeah, I think a lot of people probably um, were desiring a level of transformation. Maybe they didn't know what type of transformation. And so we were maybe a little blob of unfocused energy there. <laughs> mm. But then co created this. <laughs> Yes. And, and the acceleration of the current circumstances, or well, let's, let me rephrase that. The current circumstances can allow for a strong acceleration if you choose to use them that way. And I, I've been blown away by the um, potential of this storyline as we have co-created it right now. It's a, it's, if we're talking about Hollywood movies. I mean, this is probably, this is going to be the most amazing movie of all time. I mean, just like, I mean, this is what this means that we're all creators and, and anything is possible. And we didn't come here for the teacup ride. We came here for really like the most amazing roller coaster. And it's definitely turning into something like that. We cannot know what's around the corner. That's literally the state of where we're in at the moment. Mm -hmm. Didn't famous director say uh, reality is stranger than fiction? It's <laughs> I mean, you could have never come up with this. <laughs> no. no, no, it's, uh, I mean, if you think about it, like we're coming from really believing in our pitiful storylines. I'm sorry, but most of us have, you know, we grew up in a certain way and, you know, just feeling like we're, we're nothing, you know, we're not, we're not significant. And now we have to come to terms that we're the center of our universe. What is a jump like that? It doesn't, you can't even comprehend what that, you know, for a human, it will never be completely accepted. I'm thinking it's, it's definitely, you know, it's just going to still be a matter of faith and trusting and more and more and more, but all embracing, um, it just goes against our millions of years of, uh, you know, being ourselves up and fighting over things we never had to fight over. It's like, there, yeah. there, the law of attraction would have worked back. It always does all this stuff would have, you know, but we had to go through a, a taking and competitive kind of existence. And now this is the competition's over. It's literally, there is no more competition. Can you imagine the thing that we thought was survival of the fittest? It's not survival of the fittest. I mean, it's mm -hmm. ev evolution is evolution of consciousness, just awareness. The more self-aware you are, that's yeah. that's what's happening. And yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And I think that, uh, yeah, this, yeah, just we have to kind of just let go of knowing, thinking we know at all what tomorrow is going to be. And that's the more we can let go of the need for it to be a certain way, the more we can allow for the amazing to come through. I agree. Yeah, yeah. I think that's part of why the surprise year of 2020 <laughs> mm -hmm. 
why it came around the corner uh, or that's for me personally it's the most positive way to look at it one of the most positive angles that i found um to look at this with mm. so it would be well this just came so unexpectedly for so many people or for a lot of people maybe not for everyone i'm sure some people saw something like this mm. coming uh, but then the majority did not and um in my version of reality <laughs> yes, me too. and, and um it teaches us i mean among all the awe and despair and whatever came with that perhaps for some individuals it teaches us everything is possible and that's what i'm taking from it everything is possible if we can make a leap in that direction and you can label it however you like as positive or negative or anything in between but if we can make a leap that looks that different because mm -hmm. that's the thing right we shift it to a whole different version of reality if, if if the appearances can change that strongly overnight almost basically mm. then they can also leave that oh sorry they can no. leave no. that strong in a different direction that mm. is definitely preferred i think it's just a matter of mm, gathering our thoughts in a sense. I think that's what's happening right now. And a lot of people are being given time to do so. Um, and to remember that we have a choice in this, that you can actually focus and that your focus makes a difference. Mm -hmm. And I think people are beginning maybe to wake up to that. I, I, see, I see it a lot, but then again, I realize I'm looking at a very small segment perhaps of the population. But I think as a... Um, um, as a human race worldwide, wow, I'm just so excited to see what would happen if we started using that consciously, mm. the, our consciousness. Um, and Co creation, we that's best. I mean, like yeah, what we're doing here, it's two people are conscious, and just like, I mean, that's when everybody's going to be at some point, and it feels like, you know, it's, it's what um, it would just be exponential with what will be possible it just opens up the possibilities because if we all are puzzle pieces it means that we just have to be who we are and the other puzzle pieces naturally fit we fit the needs of everybody else and we can yeah. and just by being who we are and what can be more simple than that it's right. not you have to give up trying to be something else but that's the only which is very difficult of course and well, only yeah <laughs> it depends it depends it's how we've been raised to believe to look at life so we have a choice there too so you can rewrite all of these ideas if you realize they're just ideas and man this is such an exciting time but you're so right it just quote unquote takes for every individual for each and every one of us on our own it takes allowing ourselves to be ourselves no matter if it's scary or looks weird <laughs> uh, i mean as long as you're not harming other people or putting mm. others in danger while you're doing that so as long as you're doing that from integrity i think it's it's um the key that opens that door uh to to tremendous change mm. yeah it's on it, all levels yeah on all levels yeah i mean when, when you want to put ourselves in this game if we didn't give ourselves certain abilities and certain trajectories, you know, they're, they're, I don't think we're from a higher level of masochistic where we want to just, uh, you know, that the physical beings let them suffer. I think it's literally a legitimate, we want every everything to rise, you know, and it's not, uh, there's definitely a benefit here that I think that it's the, the rubber band analogy is obviously a beautiful one from Bashar where you know, that we, we pull ourselves so back, far back on the rubber band. And, and the point now, I think, is literally to let go and, and to let it shoot. And then it, the momentum comes by itself because when you're doing your passion, you don't, you don't sense time. You don't worry about things. You're just present. And, and that's the future we can look forward to. Yeah. Yeah. Not when we're dead. Not when we're dead. We want it to do it here. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. On Earth, we're, we yes. are the anchors, Definitely. for sure. No, Vidika, I've been very, very uh, 
excited to speak with you and it's always a, a joy. And uh, I'm glad that we could have announced that we could announce the, the webinar and and uh, get that information out to people who mm -hmm. um, who are interested. And I, I know I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it as well. And thank you so much, Justin, for co-creating that uh, event and also this um, this conversation. Uh, always a pleasure as well. And um, yeah, I'm sure to all the people watching and listening, uh, I'm sure we will meet again soon.